What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're back with a brand new My Damn Thoughts episode, and today we are discussing WWE Elite Series 93. Now, I can tell by the viewership on the reviews of this entire wave that this was not the most exciting wave, and I think that I agree. I'm not the biggest fan of this wave either, as far as, like, my first thoughts, man. I, I really wasn't that hyped for the full thing. If you guys didn't know what My Damn Thoughts is, it's basically where we take a WWE or just action figure or AEW figure, just a regular action figure topic and we discuss it here on the channel and i give my damn thoughts about it so here we have elite series 93 the brand new wwe elite wave we have 94 up next which is a lot better wave in my opinion but i pretty much just give you a bunch of rundowns and details of this set and kind of break it all down so if you guys missed all the reviews i kind of wrap everything in a bow on this so i start things off with my first thoughts of the wave and my first thoughts of the wave were that uh i was just pretty much hyped for one figure there was one figure in this wave in particular that i was excited for and the rest i was just like yeah yeah, I guess that's cool, and that is going to be Seth Rollins. I was really hyped for this for multiple reasons. First of all, it's kind of like our first month. I know we've had Monday Night Messiahs, but not in like a dark gear, and he's got like a better looking man bun, and you know, you got your good stuff going on. Double jointed arm Seth, updated formula. It's beautiful. So this is the figure that I was most hyped for, and I was not disappointed. Next up, we're going to get into the shelf warmer in the set, and for me, on the shelf warmer of this set, I feel like it's kind of, I don't know, I, I, I feel like a few guys could take this home, but I've narrowed it down to three, and you guys can let me know who you think is going to be number one. You have T-Bar, you have Raquel, and you have Karrion Cross. I think all three of these guys could potentially show for him. I honestly, I, I want the Seth Rollins at retail because it's so good and the formula is so nice. I'd like to have a few of them, but for the rest of them, I just, I don't want to see this wave at retail, man. Not the best looking wave. It's just one of those yawn waves. I think for a, a lot of different reasons, though, and, you know, that's unfortunate, but but uh, I could see T-Bar shelf warming, but he may look cool enough in action figure form. Like, he may be so toyetic, and you get this nice thing that he gets, you know, taken off shelves. You also have Raquel, who is a women's figure. All women's figures pretty much shelf warm for the most part, outside of a couple of hearsays there and there. And then you also have Carrie and Cross. Now, Carrie and Cross's first figure shelf warm. So, getting another one that looks pretty damn identical could be dangerous for him. I have a Walmart near me that has seven Carrie and Crosses at it, and they have it moved. So, that could spell potential danger for for carrying cross. I think any of these three could go. I think Rollins will fly off. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's gonna fly off because he's a great flashback character. He's got the title with him. Cesaro, he's got a beautiful jacket, and it's the last ever Cesaro, and I think people are gonna want a Cesaro. We haven't had one in a very long time, so I think Cesaro goes pretty quickly, but these three right here, man, if I had to give it to one, I think I'd go carrying cross with the biggest shelf warmer, but I could see, if I walked into a Walmart and there was 10 copies of one of these figures, it wouldn't shock me, is what I'm trying to say. Next up is gonna be the hottest figure, and I think I think that's pretty easy, man. I think it's going to be Rollins. I think Rollins is going to be the guy that flies off. I think a lot of people are wanting this version of Seth Rollins. It comes with a jacket. It looks pretty damn nice. You get the cool formula. Double jointed arm Seth Rollins is going to have no problem moving units. I think he's going to be a hot figure, and he's going to be the hottest in this set. If you also notice, my scaffolding back there fell. It's because I have a lamp that's broken, and it falls and crashes into everything, so that pisses me off, but if you're wondering why the scaffolding's knocked over, that's why. Next up, we got to discuss the Chase variant in the set, and that is going to belong to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. The chase variant in this set is beautiful. It's a yellow version of this gear right here, and it looks very sick. I wish it was the regular version, but uh, I like them both. I think they're both sweet. This figure right here may be the most underrated in the set, the one that I thought wasn't going to be that great, and then when I got it in hand, I was like, oh damn, this is nice. So, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat would be the most underrated. Maybe another category to add to the My Damn Thoughts episodes on different waves could be a thing, but Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is the chase. Next up, guys, we're going to get into head sculpts, which figure figure has the best head sculpt in the wave and I think for me it came down to two and it's actually going to be two of the biggest uh, the, the two of the biggest shelf warmers and that's, that's going to be T-Bar and that's going to be Raquel. I think both of these look just like the talent honestly. I, I really do. I think Karrion Cross is a repeat head sculpt of Elite 85. Cesaro's a repeat head sculpt with some true effects. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat has had much better head sculpts and then Seth Rollins isn't bad but it's not my favorite head sculpt of all time. It is good. It's definitely good but I think these two are your money makers. This sculpt on this T-Bar is sick as hell with like the like the buckles and the straps on the back, the different studs and the textures. And then this Raquel has great likeness and it's a great expression. So I went with those two as the best head sculpts in the game. In the game, you know what I meant. The best head sculpts in the entire wave. Now, as far as the worst head sculpt, it's going to go to my man, Ricky. Steamboat, unfortunately, has seen better days in head sculpts. I think his last figure, we can even compare his fan takeover figure. This has a much better likeness to Steamboat. I think that one day we'll get even a better Steamboat, you know, compared to this one over here. But 
but for now, this one just doesn't do it for me. I do like the removable headband, but I think that this over here crushes the, the new one, so uh, yeah, I, I think the rest in the wave are, are passable. This one just didn't do it for me, therefore, he is the worst in the set. Now, getting into best articulation, I actually came down to two, and that's going to be Seth Rollins and Ricky Steamboat. I feel like the Steamboat feels immaculate in hand. He's not on ball joints, but he moves incredibly well. You gave him double jointed arms, and like he can move around. I'm not getting any stiffness out of him. He feels really, really clean in the hand. If people have learned what that means from MDT, if MDT says a figure feels good in the hand, then uh, it, it's very fun to pose around and move around, man. So, Ricky Steamboat has great articulation, but this, this Rollins also does, and he has ball joints. So, I honestly think I'm going to give it to Rollins, but uh, Steamboat's up there as well. You know, uh, he does have ball joints, so I think it gives him a slight edge over it. So, I'm going to go Seth Rollins for the win in the best articulation standpoint. And then the worst articulation is actually going to go to Raquel over here. Bless her, her arm came off when I tried posing her. Her ab crunch is like non-existent. You guys know how women's figures are. The waist swivel is very weird. Her legs are very, very loose and her ankles are loose. So yeah, I, ca I can't give it to her. If her joints were tight, it would be a very close call. I think she would be an excellent, you know, figure there. It's not a bad figure. I still like the way it looks a lot. I like the way that her figure looks like in gear. I just think that the, uh, you know, the, the freaking joints are super loose and no ab crunch makes it hard for me to rank her any higher than dead last in articulation. Now the best accessory in this set has got to be my man Cesaro's jacket. This jacket is just insane. This jacket is immaculate. All the different layering you get, it is cloth. You get like these different buttons and straps. You get your logos on the back. It feels, it fits the figure really well. I thought T-Bar's jacket was really good. I thought Raquel Gonzalez's jacket was really good as well. We also have that one off screen here and that one's very form-fitting there. I think this could go on a, a world of superstars and I do love the way the jacket looks. I just think Cesaro's is is better, just slightly. I think the like layering you get and the logos and like the, the little strap shoulders here, stuff like that is really sweet. So I'm gonna go with Cesaro's. Even though you get more like, I don't know, uh, what's it, flexibility with this, you know, you could put it on a, a different assortment of characters. I still think Cesaro's is the better jacket. So I, I think I'm gonna go with Cesaro as the best accessory in this set. Now, before we get into the ranking, I do wanna go one by one through each figure and break down how many figures we have of each person and then talk to you about those figures. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Up first, we do have Karrion Cross, And Karrion Cross only has two Elites. He has the Elite Series 85, which we mentioned earlier. And then, of course, he does have the Elite 93 here. I think the Elite 85 is slightly... I don't know. I like the accessories we got with the Elite 85. This one's not bad. I mean, you could probably mix and match the parts from those two figures and make like an ultimate cross. And I guess you could just remove this and it's basically the, that other cross. But it, this one does have double-jointed arms. so And it has probably a better, more accurate skin tone, but at the same time, it's it's eh, you know. I, I do like the details on this figure, though. I was actually more impressed with this figure once I got it in hand. Next up is Raquel Gonzalez. This is the only Raquel that we have. We'll probably get more, though, as she is on the main roster now under Raquel Rodriguez, so we'll probably get another one of her, but this is her only figure or elite right now. Next up, we have T-Bar, and T-Bar, this is his only elite as well. We do have a basic Dominic Dijakovic, but we do not have any other T-Bar figures, you know, especially not elites. This is his only one, and probably his only one he'll ever get. We'll have to see how that goes, but I don't expect to get a T-Bar figure for a very long time. Next up, guys, we do have Cesaro, and Cesaro actually has five elites. He has the Elite 93, which you're looking at. He has the Elite 23, the Elite 33, the Elite 47, and the Elite 58. So it seemed like once he came into the company and once he was on that blazing a trail through the company, it seemed like he was getting a figure every 10 Elite series or so, and then around 58, it just stopped. You know, it stopped happening, and now here we are. But, uh, you know, this figure does have some surgery it needs to go through, but hopefully we can fix him up nice and get him on his way, but I do like the Cesaro figure. I just think it needs to have a bunch of surgery done to it. For Ricky Steamboat, he actually has six elites. You've probably never known that, but he has the Elite 93 which you're looking at. He has the Elite 93 Chase, which we discussed in this video. He has the Legends Ricky Steamboat. He has the Fan Takeover. He has his Defining Moments, and then he has his Flashback Walmart exclusive. So a lot of them kind of look the same, you know, but uh, he does have six elites just released there, so that's pretty crazy. And last but not least, we have the man who has six million elite figures, and that is going to be Seth Rollins. You may not even know how many damn figures this man has, but it is actually quite a bit. Seth Rollins has a total of 20 elite figures, man. 20 elites across all the different lines. And of course, you have the Elite 93, which you're looking at. You have the Elite Series 86, the Elite 64, the Top Talents, the Second Top Talents, the Third Top Talents, the Elite 75, the Then Now Forever, the NXT Elite, the Elite 33, 
the Elite 25, the Elite 57, the Fan Takeover, Elite Series 70, Elite 45, the SummerSlam Elite, the Elite 52, the Shield 3-pack, the Elite 37, and the cash-in exclusive Toys R Us, Seth Rollins. I probably missed one, you know? I probably did miss one, but Seth Rollins has a ton of figures, man. He has an absolute unit of figures, and I'm here for it all day. I love Seth Rollins. I love his figures. They're very fun to collect, and now that I'm looking at this figure, his head's pretty damn big, man. Pretty damn big head on this guy but still looks like a damn good figure and uh, I, I like it but he has 20 elites that's pretty insane all right man it is that time of the video where we rank elite series 93 from worst to best in my own opinion now you guys know the criteria for the ranking lots of stuff going in there some of my criteria that goes into this ranking is going to come down to excitement level for the figure how the figure feels in hand the parts choices that they went with how well does it articulate the accessories the likeness how much does it remind me of said superstar just a lot of different things go into the criteria criteria and just because of figure comes in at the bottom of the ranking doesn't mean that it's the worst figure ever and doesn't have any good qualities and just because a figure's number one does not mean that it doesn't have any faults in it whatsoever so with all those things being said led let's start off with number six and it's gonna go to Raquel and that kind of pained me because this figure is actually pretty damn good you know beside you know loose joints aside it is pretty loose there but I like the head sculpt I think her attire is pretty badass I think that you know she moves well around quite well I just hate how loose it is and I think there's better figures and I hate how they do the women's figures with the ab crunch they can lean back pretty decent, but that ab crunch forward is non-existent so number six is Raquel and somebody had to go there you know somebody had to go there and it's unfortunate coming in at number five is going to be Karrion Cross. I don't know if you guys saw this one coming but first of all I'm not a big Karrion Cross guy never been one you know he beat my boy Finn Balor and now he gets punished here in the ranking for my bias I'm just kidding but seriously though not a lot of changes from his elite series 85 figure not a lot of stuff going on with it I do like the skirt I think the textures you get are awesome I do like the double jointed arms they did remove some tattooature same head sculpt as a four he's not even in the company anymore it's just very like eh you know I, it's just not my favorite there he had to go with number five coming in at number four is going to be t-bar now this figure was actually pretty impressive to me kind of shocked the hell out of me did not see this one coming it was very shocking he's very toyetic looking i think they nailed the sculpts on the head the both head sculpts i like the formula they went with he is pretty damn short though like uh cesaro is six five and i think dijakovic is like way taller than that and he's not way taller than that in figure form i'm pretty sure t-bar is supposed to be six seven and yeah he's not coming in at six seven right there man so uh that kind of bothered me there but nonetheless t-bar is a pretty fun figure there he's got good articulation he moves around pretty well and he comes in at number four coming in at number three is gonna be cesaro cesaro i love the figure low-key like i want to like it a lot but like the big diaper thingy the weird formula the way his shoulders like don't really move well just some weird things going on with this figure man it just looks very weird with how jacked his arms are how jacked his legs are like i know he's a big jack guy but at the same time man not quite that big you know what i'm saying i think we do have some ways to make him shorter we're gonna make him look better we're gonna fix him up nice but until we do that he is gonna be number three and i gotta rank him how they came in man he has a sick ass accessory it's the same head sculpt we've seen i love cesaro but this is a number three figure for me now coming in at number two and one is gonna be steamboat and rollins and i think at the end of the day i can sleep well at night knowing that i put steamboat at two and rollins at number one so that is my ranking there man i mean it kind of writes itself steamboat feels immaculate in the hand i love the championship i love the gear i'm not a big fan of the head skull but he moves fantastic and i like steamboat he can put on some bangers so you got rollins at one you do have steamboat at two you have cesaro at number three you have t-bar at number four we have carrying cross at number five and then we have raquel rodriguez slash gonzalez coming in at the bottom of the ranking again man not like like, like the quality of the set isn't horrific like it's not perfect there are some things wrong with it like steamboat's head raquel's articulation cesaro's weird formula repeated head sculpts rollins pants colors aren't even accurate so there's some definite things that they could definitely improve on and this wave is just kind of bleh you know it doesn't have a ton of stuff going on with it but at the same time it does have some pretty good things about it which i like but at the end of the day i think elite 94 is better i think elite 91 crushes this set i think elite 92 is much better than this set too or at least let's see off the top of the dome yeah i think pound for pound elite 92 is probably better as an overall set but that is going to wrap up my ranking and all of my damn thoughts on elite series 93 man thank you guys so very much for watching hope you guys did enjoy the video let me know your thoughts on it down in the comment section below but i'm getting out of here man thank you for watching subscribe to the channel let me know your thoughts down below and i'll see you guys in the next video and don't cross the line like i guess all the problems in this set i don't know you cross the line i've been